You have in front of you a sheet with three sample questions on it. We're not quite ready to do the sample questions yet. If you're into taking notes, I would suggest you jot a few things down. And again, you do not need to write every single thing down. What you need to be able to do is find the horizontal component of a force. That's what you need to be able to do. So whatever helps you to do that, that's what you should do. Example. I'm going to do three examples. But first, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Okay? So here we go. So when you've got a situation like this, okay? Think about like uh, a dad pulling a kid on a toboggan or something like that, where the force is not perfectly horizontal. Okay, the force is at some angle here. And of course, we're going to use the Greek letter theta to represent that angle. So in a situation like this, not all of the applied force goes into accelerating the object horizontally. And Nate, if I ask you, if I decrease that angle, if I make it flatter, what does that do? Slow down something. If I decrease the angle, is, it going to, is the force going to be more horizontal? Yeah. Cole, it's time to put that away. Obviously, the force will be what? Horizontal. It'll be more horizontal, right? And will more of it go into pulling it sideways? Yes. Yes. And if that force, if I do the opposite, if I take this force right here, oh, can I ungroup it? Yes, I think I can. Right? If I take this force right here and crank it up like that, well, then hardly anything goes horizontal, right? What is it? Acceleration. This? Oh, F A, yeah, yeah. The H is horizontal. So this, my friends, this F H is referred to as the horizontal component. F H horizontal component. Well, that's new. Yeah, it's new. Horizontal component. It's the horizontal part of the force. Only the horizontal component acts horizontally, hence the name, and contributes to the acceleration. And the value of FH, what does the H stand for? Horizontal. Horizontal force is dependent, I guess it says dependent on, this should be dependent, right? is dependent <coughs> on the applied force and the angle. So the bigger the force, the bigger the horizontal force. The less the angle, the bigger the horizontal force, right? Wait, did I hear less angle? The, the gr less the angle, right? If I have a small angle like this, well, then that's going to make the horizontal component bigger, right? OK, so you need to be able to find that. <coughs> Now, in grade 12, we deal with another force as well, which I'll sort of just let you know about, but we're not going to worry about it too much for a while anyways. If this is the horizontal component, well, then this one over here is the? Yep, at V, vertical component. And when you do stuff like this, and there's a projectile going through the air, there's a horizontal component sideways, and there's a vertical component up and down. Okay, so that's where this leads. Is that all kind of making some sense? Yeah, Jake? Yeah, good? Thanks for sharing. You know what's bad when I don't even like it? <laughs> Nate, you really need to talk much less. You'll find you'll understand so much more. <laughs> Maybe if you're talking about this. Okay, so here's some actual math. You don't need to redraw that, you've already got it drawn. Well, hopefully you do. Where are these notes? You're writing them, Matt. You write what you need. Stop talking and write. Listen. 
Understand. Engage. <laughs> okay, so suppose that the applied force FA is 100, and the angle that I'm talking about is 30 degrees above horizontal. So you've got a picture like this, right? Will, uh, Lucas, will this angle always be 90 degrees? Probably not. Why do you say that? Well, because the other one's going to change sometimes. That one will always. That one will? Like if I change this <laughs> value here. If I change this to like this, all that happens is that goes over there. Is it still going to be 90 degrees? Yeah. Still going to be 90 degrees. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So the angle will always be 90 degrees, which means I can use, if it's a 90 degree triangle, I can use Pythagoras, I can use all that great S, O, H, sine, cos, tan, all that stuff in here, right? We can use trigonometry. It's a right triangle. So my 100 is my hypotenuse. My angle is 30. The FH, I've got a hypotenuse. I'm looking for adjacent, and I'm looking for opposite. Nate, just try to ignore, listen to me. He knows his way to the laptop cart, it's 10 feet away. I knew exactly what he wanted. It just totally disrupts the learning process of this class. Alright, so by now, maybe even some of you have written down this side over here. Because FH is the adjacent side. And we've got the hypotenuse. We are talking about cosine. Okay. The adjacent side is the one that makes up half of the angle. Right. It's the one beside the angle. So cosine 30 is equal to FH over 100. And you can rearrange that. FH is equal to 100 cos 30. Or 86.6. Yes. Sort of a cross multiply thing. Is it always going to be cosine? No. Oh. That's a pretty emphatic Ooh. class, no. <coughs> what do you think, Jake? Is it always going to be cosine? What would change? What would have to change to make it not cosine? We'd have to not be dealing with the adjacent side. We'd have to be dealing with the... And if it was over there, well, then it wouldn't be FH. It would be the vertical component, wouldn't it, right? So let me ask you again, is it always going to be cosine? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. Except, except in one situation. You said it always, but you can't say Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I hate the word always. Except if your force was the angle was that one, right? If your angle was that one, well then which would be your horizontal? It'd be like that and it would be sine, right? But 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to give you the force relative to the horizontal, not to the vertical. Okay, so 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be cosine. The horizontal component is, you could even write this as a formula if you want. FH is equal to FA cos theta. If you want to write that as a formula, that's probably going to work for you 99% of the time. The horizontal component is the applied force times the cosine. H is equal to FH cos theta. And what does the FH do? It's the thing that drags it horizontal. Okay, so in this case here, I got 100 newtons and I got 86.6. How much is pulling it sideways? 86.6. <coughs> Only 86.6 is dragging it sideways. How could I make that 86.6 bigger? Well, if I made the angle less. Right? If I want to make it smaller, then I pull at a steeper angle, right? Wouldn't you be making, wouldn't you be making it bigger if you could help them? Go on like this? I don't understand how you're making it smaller. If you make the angle smaller, right? Like if I put a 20 down there, I think I've got it up in the next slide. If I put a 20 there, this is going to be 100 cos 20, you're going to get a bigger number. How do we find the 30? I gave it to you in the question. I'm going to have to give you that. I'm going to have to give you that. So we're trying to find the side. 
Trying to find the horizontal component. Yes, the side. That's called the vertical, right? If the angle increases, say, to 60 degrees, oh, yeah. right, then the FH will decrease. I'm going to have cos 60 is FH over 100. 100 cos 60, I only get 50 newtons sideways. <laughs> so, well, this should be changed, right? It should be a 60. The greater the angle, the less the horizontal component. So now you can flip over to that example set of questions that we're going to work with this here a little bit. Okay? I moved that hard example from last time. Example three you can just leave out from that last sheet. Okay, and it's, it's example number three on this one here. Okay, so I started you off a little bit easier here. Got that call? Yeah. Okay, so leave that in your pocket there so you can concentrate. A force of 100 newtons is applied at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal to a 25 kilogram sled. Determine the acceleration if the surface is frictionless. Step one is always, Lucas, draw the FBD. This is the first example, as I was just telling when you guys were having your little conversation. I moved example three out of that previous set, and I created two new easy ones, and I put example three at the end of this set. Two new relatively easy ones. Yes. Okay? So you now have a sheet in front of you. It should have three examples, and this is the first one. We have not done this one yet. I'm going to do it right now. Well, how silly is he? So, a force of 100 newtons is applied at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal to a 25 kilogram sled. Determine the acceleration if the surface is frictionless. So, yeah, we've actually, Mitchell's right, we've actually sort of started this one, right? Well, F A F H. Less talk, Nick. More listening. 25 kilograms, right? Okay, before I can get the acceleration, I need the horizontal component. So something like FH is equal to FA cos theta. Line up those equal signs. 100 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees, which we already know to be. Where did you get 30 from? <laughs> Eighty six point six newtons, right? We just did that one, exactly. What's the next step now? The next step is to determine the acceleration. No. The do we have a delta V here? No. We gotta have F net is equal to M A, but I don't have F net, I got F H. Are there any other horizontal forces acting on this. Horizontal forces, because I do have a weight force and I do have a normal force, but do I have anything else horizontally? No. no. So my net force is equal to my horizontal force. There are no other forces acting on it horizontally. They are equal to each other. The net force is only that one. So where did I put my 86.6? Right up here, 86.6. Notice how I'm going from left to right. Notice how I'm writing the formula. Notice how I'm substituting and lining up my equal signs. That's what it should look like. That's a proper solution. What's the mass? 25. Next step. That was already written there. Where? We already knew it was 25. Yeah, the mass is 25, right? Why do you write the sign of the mass and then times acceleration? Right? I've substituted 25 in for the mass. So my acceleration is 86.6 divided by 25. And I'm going to have to actually get a calculator on that. Oddly enough, I don't have that commitment. It is not the last of us. F net divided by A. F L. 
F H. That looks like an Aldebee. We've been talking about F H this entire period. Okay. Nice, easy, two-step question. That's using the horizontal component. I suppose if you want to count drawing it as a step. Easy enough, Hope? Good? Yeah? Pretty? Good? Yeah? Clarity? Am I making sense? Okay. This one has a friction force. How am I going to deal with that? Where is that friction force going to come into play? It is going to be opposite, but what which step am I going to have to deal with it? It's in here, right? It's an H. Let's draw the diagram. I'll try to make it an H this time. Force of 50 Newtons. F A is equal to 50. Why do we have to draw this in square? Well, it just helps you. It also helps me to understand how much you know. 15 degrees. 30 kilos. Friction. Minus 5, right? <coughs> like so. Determine the acceleration of the sled. Okay, so step one. What's the first thing we need to do, Jake? What's the first thing we need to do? Yep. F A cos theta. So in this case here, it would be 50 times cosine 15. Line up those equal signs. Forty-eight point three. No, that's why I'm building it one step at a point at a time here. Forty-eight point three newtons. I put a little in there. Is that going to confuse people? Newton. Now I've got F net is equal to the applied force. Do you remember why I put plus friction force? Because we're adding all the forces together, right? It just so happens that the friction force is negative. So now, oh, now, just hold on here. Is this going to be 50 minus 5 or is this going to be 48.3 minus 5? 48.3. Exactly. So in this case here, really, whoops, I want it to be an eraser. Really, what I'm saying is this is the horizontal component, right? FH. So this is 48.3 minus 5, because I'm not doing that step. What step am I doing? Last time I said the F net is equal to the FH, but that was because there was no friction. Now there's friction, so i got to do the subtraction thing. Right? Does that make sense, Tess? Too straightforward? And now what's the last step again? Yeah. FH plus FH. 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 Plus whatever. Yeah. Remember I said about 30 seconds ago, I said, why do I write plus FF? Because you're adding the forces, but the FF, I'm adding a negative is what I'm doing. I'm adding a negative. Does this question look familiar? This is the one that we were going to do 
Friday that we chose not to. Okay? So I built you up to be able to do this. Yes. How about you start it on your own? No. How about you start it on your own? What's the two Newtons? Friction. First step, FH is FA cos 30. Hey, stop. I'm trying to do this. Okay. Why is it 300 down there? Yeah. Is that your favorite movie or something? No, it says 30 degrees. It's 30 degrees. Gage, watch. I'm done. 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 I
There you go. 13.5. You have to cross multiply. Cross multiply? Yeah. Okay, so the big question is yeah, how much would that whole mess be worth? One, two, three, four, five, probably six, maybe seven if I gave you the diagram. Now, yes, the bar has been raised. The bar has been raised. You have to meet it. All right, so. Oh, oh. You've got some more here. On the back side, there's ones like this, right? So I'm giving you the rest of this period to work. Please make sure you use it. Do a little quiz to see where you're at on Wednesday. Yeah?